Okay, question four. A student investigated the motion of a glider on an air track. The speed of the glider is the same at both ends of the air track. What is the tendency for objects to continue at the same speed in the same direction called? You might be tempted to talk about Newton's first law here, but actually they're talking about inertia. And inertia is another way of saying momentum, really. Okay. Um, the glider has a mass of 0.14 kg and a velocity of 17 centimeters per second. Calculate the momentum of the glider. Pretty straightforward. If you remember the formula for momentum, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Often you'll see it's the symbol rho equals mv. Okay. Now they've actually given us some units here, which has made me immediately realize the units for, for velocity they've given us are um, not going to work. I've got to convert that. So let's sub the numbers in. I don't need to do any rearrangement. I'm being asked for momentum. Sub the numbers in. Um, 0 0.14, 0 0.14, sorry, times by now the 17. Let's think about that. 17 centimeters in meters. Well, 17, it's going to be, well, I actually just know off the top of my head it's 0 0.17 because like 20 centimeters is 0 0.2 of a meter. So how do you work that out? You divide by 100. So you take the decimal place that's here and you move it over once, then twice. Right? That's what's happening, which makes it 0.17 meters. So you can divide by 100, or you can write in your calculator 17 times 10 to the minus 2. All of that will work. So if I typed into my calculator 17 times 10 to the minus 2, in standard form, that would also work. So if I calculate this, 17 to the power of minus 2, 17 to the power of minus 2, times 0.14, did it in a slightly different order, but order of multiplication doesn't matter, and I'm getting 0 0.0238, 0 0.0238, which I might round to 24, 0 0.024 kilogram meters per second, quite a small number. Okay, but I'm not going to let that phase me. I'm a bit, I'd like to check the mark scheme, but I'm pretty happy I did everything correct. Yeah, I can't see any mistakes that I've made, so I'm quite happy to leave it like that. The glider, okay, so what happens now? So figure seven shows two identical gliders traveling at the same speed, but in opposite directions. So they have the same magnitude of velocity, but their directions are completely opposite. The gliders collide and stick together, so it is an inelastic collision, they stick together. Explain what happens to the momentum and speed of the gliders, both. So we know one rule about momentum. During collisions, momentum is always conserved. So what will happen to the momentum of the gliders? The momentum of both gliders will be the same before the collision as it will be after. So just like we've just worked out actually the momentum of this one, it was 0 0.024. Well, let's just say that that was, uh, which way was it going? Let's just say that that was this one here, 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.024 kilogram meters per second of momentum there. Well, then this one would be 0 0.024 kilogram meters per second, but it would actually be minus because it's going this way, not this way. And when you add 0 0.024 to 0 point, minus 0 0.024, you've got zero. So you kind of get a bit of a clue as what's going to happen to the speed of the gliders. We've talked about the momentum. I think we've got both marks for that one. Now let's talk about the speed. Well, um, they're going to have, they're going to stop because uh, if they collide and you've got the same momentum after the collision but they're stuck together, the total momentum before the collision, they're both the same mass and they're both moving at the same speed. Two identical gliders at the same speed. They'd have had identical magnitudes of momentum. So the total momentum before was definitely zero because the magnitude was the same but they were opposite directions so they'd be equal to zero when you add them together. So the speed after will be zero. Okay, so look at the next bit. The light gate on an air track is shown in figure 8. It aims a beam of light at a sensor. A data logger calculates the speed of the glider. 
The data logger divides the length of the card by the time for which the card breaks the beam of light. So this is basically speed equals distance divided by time. This is the distance here, the distance from, sorry, one end of the card to the other. And the time is the amount of time that the beam is being cut and you can calculate speed from that. Figure 9 shows two vehicles on the road. The beam of light and the sensor shown in figure 9 are not suitable for determining the speed of vehicles on the road. Give two reasons why they're not suitable. So the idea is, is that the van, when it gets in the goes between, is going to block it, block the beam for a bit. But if the car and the van go through, the distances are different, aren't they? They're not the same. They're not the same as each other. So reason number one why this isn't going to work very well is reason the distance sorry the uh, length of vehicles is different okay so explanation the distance used to calculate speed calculate speed is not known for all vehicles. Right. And then the second reason, I'll be honest, I was I probably have got there on my own, but I did check the mark scheme. And if these two vehicles was to pass through at the same time, they didn't they'd get in the way of each other and you wouldn't know. Like if you're really sneaky and you want to beat the policeman, uh not that I've ever done this. Uh but if there's a bus going past the speed camera, you know that you can zip past the inside of the bus, not be seen by the speed camera, and do whatever speed you like. Very irresponsible behaviour, and obviously not the kind of thing that any normal person would do. But uh, yeah, the fact that uh, the beam could be bro uh, beam could be broken by multiple vehicles, vehicles at the same time. Okay, so that is also an issue. Right, we'll just have one quick look at the mark scheme to check that I'm not losing my marbles. Right, so inertia 0 0.024, so that's fine. I thought it was a bit small, but that's fine. Total momentum before collision equals zero. Momentum is conserved. Total momentum after collision will be zero, so the speed after the collision will be zero. Yeah, I think I've got all those points. And then it's uh, more than one car may pass through the beam at any time. Okay, so I think we'd have got all those marking points. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.